Hi everybody, uh, if we haven't met yet, my name is Steve Robinson and we're starting workshop number three. And in workshop number three, for this six to eight week block of material, the bully is going to be approaching from behind. So today, we're gonna to start with what we refer to as a back kick. I really like this kick a lot. A back kick is a power move, it's a power kick. And many of you know by now that some kicks are designed to be fast, such as a side snap kick, such as a front kick, and some kicks are designed to be powerful. And that's the case of, that is the case of a cat stance back kick. When you throw a back kick, a key point to remember, it is a thrusting motion. It's not a snapping motion, it's a thrusting motion. And when you kick, you must hit with the heel part of your foot, okay? When you kick, you want to hit with the heel part of your foot. So, let's start traditionally. If you will, slide your toes and heels together so that they touch. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see. Make sure your toes touch. Make sure your heels touch. Take your right foot, slide it out to your horse stance. Make a nice tight fist, put the other hand on top, and salute. As you well know by now, the karate bow, it's a symbol, it's only a symbol. It's not a religious thing. When we bow to one another, we're saying that we're friends, we're buddies, we're here to have fun with each other, we're here to learn with and grow with each other, but we're not here to hurt one another, okay? So we're gonna start with some punches. When you punch, you wanna use these two knuckles right here. Okay, don't want to use the flat of the hand. You want to hit with these two knuckles right here. So, once again, toes are touching, heels are touching. Good ready stance, great ready stance. Take that right foot, slide it out to your horse stance. Extend your right hand. Let's punch. And we're going to throw a, a set of eight single punches. And one, ah, two, ah, three, ah, four. Ah, good. And remember, when you punch, you want to punch to your own chin level. We're on number five. You ready? Five. Ah, six. Ah, seven. Ah, eight. Ah, bring the hand to the hip. Slide those toes and heels together so that they touch. I want to see a good ready stance from you. Toes come together. Heels come together. Let's say 15 seconds or so, let's jog in place or do some jumping jacks to kind of warm up a little bit. You want to loosen up your muscles. All right, if you want to turn it into some jumping jacks, that's fine. But all we're trying to do is kind of warm up a little bit, okay? Three, two, one. All right, show me a great ready stance, everyone. Toes and heels together so that they touch. Slide out to your horse stance. Good, strong little horse stance. When your knees are bent, and when your knees are pressed out hard, and when your, your bottom is nice and low, you're in a solid stance. It would make it harder for the bully to knock you over when you're in a solid stance. So, extend your arm, eight punches, and one, and two. Good, remember to scream, and three, ah, and four, ah, and five, ah, and six, ah, and seven, ah, one more, eight, ah, bring the hand to the hip. How about an awesome ready stance from a bunch of awesome kiddos? Toes, heels must come together touching. That's not a great ready stance, okay? A great ready stance is when the toes and heels come all the way together touching. All right, 15 seconds or so. Jog in place, do some jumping jacks, whatever you want to do, everyone. Again, just try to warm up the muscles a little bit. Okay? I love this cat stance back kick. It is a power, power, power move. And when you throw this kick, you're going to aim right at his tummy. Okay? So remember, it's a power move. This cat stance back kick is. You want to hit with the heel part of your foot, okay? And you want to aim for his tummy. It's powerful, very powerful. Hit with your heel, 
and aim for the tummy, okay? And we're gonna take this apart. I'm gonna give you a side view, and since I'm a lefty, I'm gonna be kicking with my left leg. You use any leg you want, because we will be using both the right and the left. You start in your cat stance, and if you are not familiar, the purpose of a cat stance. When you are in this stance, when you're in this cat stance, let's just say a majority of your body weight, 90%, 95% of your body weight is on your supporting leg, so that you can lift your kicking leg up easily. The purpose of a cat stance is that you put a majority of your body weight on your supporting leg so that you can lift the kicking leg up easily. In a horse stance, you can't lift the leg up easily. You've got to shift your body weight. So, cat stance back kick. I want you to just watch here for a few seconds, okay? Just uh, don't throw the kick with me, just watch. I'm in my cat stance, my knees are bent, and when my knees are bent, that forces my body weight to the balls of the feet. You want your body weight to the balls of your feet, not back on your heels. If your knees are straight, in this case, my body weight shifts back to the heel of my supporting foot. It's harder to balance, we have found, when the weight is back on your heels. It's easier to balance when your weight is to the balls of the feet. Now, when you do the first step, knees are bent. When you do the first step, here's my challenge. Don't allow your knee to lift up. Don't allow your knee to rise up. Keep your knee stationary. Watch what I do with my foot. And bring it back. Don't move the knee. It's very common to want to lift the knee. It's natural to want to lift the knee. That's a no-no today. We're not going to lift the knee, okay? Start in your cat stance. Hands are up for balance. Hands are up for protection. We call it a guard position. I challenge you not to move the knee. Chamber your heel and put it down. Remember to keep the knees bent. Don't move the knee. Chamber your heel and put it down. Good. One more time. You ready? I challenge you not to allow this knee to move. It's body control. Okay? It's natural to want to lift the knee. That's a no-no today. Don't lift the knee. Chamber the heel and put it down. Good for you. Let's do that from the opposite side this time. Okay? So use your opposite leg. Again, start it in your cat stance. Your body weight is to the balls of your feet. You don't want to stay straight. You don't want your knees straight. You want to bend your knees and put the body weight to the ball, in this case, to the ball of your left foot. Okay? 90%, 95% of your body weight should be to the balls of your feet. Why? Because when the weight is to the ball of your foot, or the balls of your feet, it'll help you balance. Okay, here's a physical challenge. Here is a physical challenge. Don't move this knee. You're going to chamber your heel just like you did on the last kick. Chamber the heel and put it down. Good. Notice that I'm leaning a little bit. I'm not staying straight. I want to lean just enough in the opposite direction that I'm going to kick so that when I kick, I can get my kick up to go ah, waist level. If I keep my back straight, it's hard to kick waist level. So. Are your knees bent? Are you leaning slightly? You don't have to go to the extreme, just lean slightly. Guard is up. You know the challenge, don't move the knee. Chamber the heel and put it down. Let's do it one more time and I'm gonna uh, bring up a very important point about this back kick. Don't move the knee, chamber the heel. Good for you, all right. So. When you chamber your heel, as you just did, 
wrap your toes up to your shin. Don't point the toes because you don't want to hit with your toes. Wrap your toes up towards your shin. Here's what I'm talking about. Watch my toes. Watch my foot. This is a no-no. Don't point your toes. This is a yes-yes. Pull your toes back so that you hit with the heel. That is a physical challenge to pull the toes back. Just like it is a physical challenge not to lift your knee, but to lift your heel. Karate, Kung Fu, Judo, whatever style it is, it can really help in the areas of coordination. It can really help hand-foot coordination, eye-hand coordination. It can really help in the areas of balance. This takes some time to keep the knee stationary and wrap the toes up. It takes practice just like anything else, okay? So now, let's throw three to five kicks with each leg. Again, it's a cat stance back kick. The target, the bully, the, the, the attacker is behind you, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to use my left leg first. You use whatever leg you want. So ask yourself, are your knees bent? Is the weight to the balls of your feet? Don't straight straight. That's a no-no. Are your knees bent? Are you leaning slightly in the opposite direction that you're going to be kicking? I'm going to be kicking in back of me. If you use your left leg when you kick, you glance over your left shoulder. That doesn't mean twist because that's bad form, man. Your knees are bent. You're leaning slightly and you glance over your shoulder so you can see the target. Don't twist. You're, you're going to miss the target. Okay? Please watch. Ah! Ah! Scream when you kick. Scream when you put your foot down. Bottom line, whether you scream once or twice, it doesn't matter. The scream is designed to give you energy. The scream is designed to, it's said to, uh, it can be intimidating to the attacker, excuse me. All right, so, cat stance. Scream when you kick, scream when you put your foot down. It's a power move, you ready? Go, go. Ah, ah, one down. You ready? Two, ah, ah, three, ah, ah. And notice that when I threw the kick, I didn't straighten up. If you straighten when you throw that kick, your energy doesn't go that way towards the target, it goes up. And you actually could miss the target. Don't want to get too detailed with that. But if you straighten up when you kick, you can completely miss the target. You lose your balance, okay? Couple more. Knees are bent, guard is up, keep your knees bent. One, two, don't move the kicking knee. Three, wrap the toes up. I know that's a lot, that's a, that's a lot to remember. You can do it. Kick. Ah, ah. One more, same leg. Kick. Ah, ah. It is a power move, always hitting with the heel. Let's use the opposite leg this time. Three to five kicks. So I'm just gonna turn around the other way, give you a side view. Start with the knees bent and the weight to the balls of your feet. Why do you keep the weight to the balls of your feet? Because it helps you with balance, okay? Straightening up, put your body weight on the heels of your feet, and uh, typically you're gonna, you, you can lose your balance. Knees bent, one. Number two, lean. Hands up for balance, hands up for protection. Okay, I know this is a lot to absorb. Try not to move the knee, or don't move the knee, and wrap those toes up when you kick. Go. Ah! Ah! That's one. Good for you. Go. Ah! Ah! Good for you. And again. Three. Ah! Ah! And again. You ready? Four. Ah! Ah! One more time. You ready? Five. Ah! Ah! Good job. All righty. That should give you plenty of material to work on over the week. When you practice your back kicks, again, the knees must stay bent. Two, you must lean in the opposite direction that you're kicking in. 
three, the knee doesn't move, and the toes get wrapped up towards your shin while you throw that kick, okay? So practice your cat stance back kick. It is a power kick versus speed kick. Front kick is a speed kick, front snap kick. Side snap kick is a speed kick. This back kick is a power move, all right? So, what does Rhonda have in store? Let me take a look in terms of exercises in workshop three. Well, she says mountain climbers, squats, and alternating B-ups. And if you don't believe me, it's right there. Workshop three. So, let's finish today's session. Not with a full Tabata, but with a half a Tabata. And if you want to add on to it, do a full Tabata. All right? Mountain climbers, squats, and alternating V-ups. All right? I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, CD running here. All right. The first move. Mountain climbers. Follow along if you're not familiar. Your workout begins. All right. Two minutes. We got to work. Three, two, one. Go. You keep your bottom down, right to the same. Bring your knees up. Come on, Kato, you got this. Keep moving. Four, three, two, one. Squats. Drop down and come up. 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 If you want to add to it and jump, jump up. Jump up. Jump up. Alternating V ups. Follow along on your back. Lift up, lift up, lift up, keep going, switch legs, I think I'm doing the wrong exercise, we'll correct it, I apologize, we'll get, we'll get to it next time, me bad, let's finish with burpees, how many burpees can you do in 20 seconds? Race the clock. Go. Two. Come on. Let's go. Three. Come on. Four. Five. Awesome. All right. Hey, you can always double up on these exercises. Go back and do the mountain climbers. Go back and do the squats. Go back and do the alternating V-ups and the burpees, okay? Remember, these exercises are designed to release energy. These exercises, in addition to releasing energy, are designed to get your muscles stronger your upper body, as well as your leg strength, all right? In conclusion of week one, what is the key to focus on in workshop three? It is the golden rule. Treat each others the way you want to be treated. Workshop three, week one, treat each others the way you would like to be treated. Great job, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you.